Hello, I'm Mr. Bob, and welcome to my Algebra 1 video series. This video covers Chapter 2, Section 5, Equations and Problem Solving. By the end of this video, you will have reviewed methods for defining variables. Included is defining one variable in terms of another. You will additionally review consecutive integer problems, distance, rate, and time problems, same direction tra of travel problems, and round trip travel problems. If you'd like me to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please leave a request in the comment section below. Please subscribe to this channel if you find this video to be helpful. Thank you. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to go over a couple definitions. Consecutive integers. Consecutive integers differ by one. The integers 50 and 51 are consecutive integers, and so are negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, they are also consecutive integers. What is a uniform motion? An object that moves at a constant rate is said to be in uniform motion. Objective one, defining variables. Some problems contain two or more unknown quantities. To solve such problems, first decide which unknown quantity the variable will represent and then express the other unknown quantities or variables in terms of that variable. And we'll look at that in the next example here. Okay, example one, defining one variable in terms of another. The length of a rectangle is six inches more than its width. The perimeter of the rectangle is 24 inches. What is the length of the rectangle? So we're gonna, let's relate this statement into a, a sentence that can be converted into an equation. So, the length is six inches more than its width. So let's let let's define the width as w, or w equals the width, and length is w plus six, because the length is six inches more than the width. So w plus six is the length, and w is going to be the width. Okay, so now we're going to write the perimeter formula, right? The perimeter formula is what length plus length plus width plus width, I guess, to get the perimeter or 2L plus 2W or however you want to think about it. Um, or 2 times L plus W. So let's write it down. We've got it here. It's P, the perimeter, right here. Perimeter is equal to 2 times L, right here, 2 times L plus 2 times W. And, when, and then we're going to substitute in to our this equation now the facts we already know. And the facts are the perimeter is 24. Here's our perimeter substituted for the P. And W plus 6 is substituted for the L. Right here, the L right there. Okay. And now we're going to use the distributive property to multiply this out. So we're going to get 24, the per perimeter. Is equal to 2 times w, 2 times w, plus 2 times 6 is 12. 2w plus 12, plus this 2 over here, the original 2 that we had in the equation here. So now 24 is equal to 4w plus 12. We've combined like terms. The 2w is here and the 2w here add together. We get 4w, and then we just carry down the 12. So 24 equals 4w plus 12. So now we have to get the 4w by itself. So we're going to move the 12, the plus 12, to the other side. And in doing so, it'll become negative 12. So now we have 24 minus 12 equals 4w plus 12 minus 12. Well, these two are going to cancel. And we're going to get the 24 minus 12 is equal to 12. Okay, so 12 is equal to 4w right here. We're going to now clear the 4. We're going to get the coefficient of the w equal to 1. And we're going to do that by multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. Or we can just say we're going to divide both sides by 4. So in dividing this side by 4 and this side by 4, we end up 12 divided by 4 is 3. And 4w divided by 4 is w. So now we know that the width is equal to 3 in our case, three inches. So what is the length? The question says, what's the length? Well, 
the width is three inches, the length is six inches, three inches, six inches. So the length is nine inches long because it's we know that the length is the width plus six inches. So right here, the length is nine inches. Okay, example one, check your understanding. Um, and if you've done, you've worked with me in the past, you'll know that on these check your understanding slides, I want you to stop the video and try it yourself. And then when you come back, we'll do them together and see how you made out. So well, I'll read it to you first. It says, the width of a rectangle is two centimeters less than its length. The perimeter of the rectangle is 16 centimeters. What is the length of the rectangle? So they want to know the length, and they told you that the width is two centimeters less than the length. So go ahead and give it a try. I'll wait for you and see, we'll see what you come up with. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've done that. So in the meantime, I filled out the solution and we can go over it. So given the problem, the width of a rectangle is two centimeters less than its length. The perimeter of the rectangle is 16 centimeters. What is the length of the rectangle? Well, we're gonna let L equal the length of the rectangle. And W is going to be equal to the length minus 2, because it says that the width is 2 centimeters less than the length. And the perimeter is P, the formula. P is equal to 2 times the quantity L plus W. And additionally, P is equal to 16 centimeters. So we have the equation right here. P Right here it is. P is equal to 2 times the quantity L plus W. And then, so now we're going to use the distributive property to come up with a solution. At first, we're going to substitute, and you'll see what it comes out to. So 16, we substituted for P. We got the perimeter, and the 2 and the L are going to stay. And then the W, we're going to replace with our W from here. And our saying our W is L minus 2. So here's the L minus 2. So now we have 16 equals 2 times L plus 2 times L minus 4, because you get, you get 2 times L and 2 times minus 2, or negative 2, okay? And then we got the 2L from the very beginning of this. So now we have these laid out. We can now come, we can start thinking about combining like terms and, and such. So we have um, 2 L plus 2L minus 4. So that 16 now is equal to 4L. That's the 2L plus 2L. And the minus 4 is brought down. So 16, the perimeter, is equal to 4L minus 4. We're going to remove the 4. We're going to move the 4 to the other side. So we get the L by itself, uh, the, the 4L in this case, by itself on one side. And when we do that, we're going to have 16 plus 4 on the left-hand side, and we're going to have 4L minus 4 plus 4. Here's the 4 that we're adding, because this was negative right here, right? That was negative, so we're going to add positive to both sides. And that gives us now 16 plus 4 is 20 equals 4L. So now what do we have to do? We have to divide both sides by 4 to get the L by itself or multiply by the multiplicative inverse, which is 1 over 4. I'll just say divide by 4 here at this point. Divide by 4 on each side. When you do that, you're going to get 20 divided by 4 equals 4L divided by 4. And when you carry out the division, you're going to get L equals 5, or 5 equals L, right? So now we know what the length is. So therefore, the length is 5 centimeters. And the width is what? Well, the width is said to be two centimeters less than the length. So the width is five minus two or three centimeters. So in example two, consecutive integer problems, we're going to look at the sum of three consecutive integers is equal to 147. Find the three integers, the three consecutive integers. So we're going to let n equal the first number. And then, so we're going to have the first number is going to be n, and the next one's going to be what? n plus 1, and then n plus 2, right? So here it is. The first number is n, the second number is n plus 1, and the third number is n plus 2, and those are three consecutive integers. 
So now let's write this in a form of an equation. So we have n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2, because it says here the sum of three consecutive integers is equal to 147. Find the integers. So in doing so, we can now remove the parentheses because we don't need them. Um, it's all addition here. So we just have to make sure we follow the negative and positive signs, but everything's positive also. So we have n for the first n, then we have n plus 1 from the second term, and n plus 2 from the third term, and that equals 147. So we're going to combine like terms, and in doing so, we're going to have three n's, one n, two n's, three n's, and two plus, uh, one plus two is three. So we have three n's plus three is equal to 147. So now we're going to do what? We're going to get the n's by themselves. It'll be on the left-hand side. So we're going to subtract three, okay, from both sides. And in doing so, we're going to have 3n is equal to 144. We subtracted 3 from 147. We got 144. And these 3s here canceled. Now that we've done that, we have 3n equals 144. We're going to divide both sides by 3 to clear the n. Okay, undo that division. Okay, or undo the multiplication. We'll use division. And we end up with 3 over 3 right here. 3 over 3 cancels, and we get n. And 144 divided by 3 is 48. So the three consecutive integers. So the first one is that n is 48. So we have it n is equal to 48. n plus 1 is 49. And n plus 2 is equal to 50. So the three consecutive integers are 48, 49, and 50. If you add them, that will come out to 147. Okay, example two, check your understanding. Directions, the sum of three consecutive integers is 48. Find the integers. So like on the last slide, you're gonna pretty much do the exact same formula with some different numbers. So I'll go ahead and pause the video, if you will, please, and try and work it out. Um, I can tell you now that here's the questions. Define a variable. They just want you to define one variable that's going to kick it all off. The first variable we're going to find. Then we're going to write the next two variables in terms of the first variable. So okay, so there'll be two terms there. And then finally, it says use those va those value variables um, to write an equation and solve it and tell us what the three integers are that will equal 48. Okay, I'll wait for you. Okay, I'm assuming we've had time now to do that. So let's go ahead and work them. Define a variable for one of the integers. Well, I'm going to say that the variable is, let's just say it's n. Okay, and it's the next two. So one of them is n plus 1 and n plus 2. That's three consecutive integers. Write and solve an equation. Well, uh, the equation is going to be simple. We're going to say n plus n n plus 1 plus n plus 2 is equal to 48. Now we're going to collect like terms, so we're going to get 3n, that's 1n, 2n's, 3n's, plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. 3n's plus 3 is equal to 48. Now we're going to get the n's by themselves, the three n's by themselves. So we're going to subtract three from each side. Okay, so this is using the subtraction property of equality. So we're now going to say that three n plus three minus three is equal to 48 minus three. And these are like terms, we're going to combine them. We've got like terms on the right hand side. So three n is equal to 45 n, oh, excuse me, just 45, not n. I'll get carried away here, Bob. Okay, so now we have a 3n that we need to undo the multiplication, that's 3 times n. We're going to do, what we're going to do there is we're going to divide each side by 3. 
When we do that, we're going to end up with n equals 45 divided by 3 is 15. So that gives us n equals 15. So n plus 1 is equal to 16. And n plus 2 is equal to 17. So the integers 15, 16, and 17. And if you add them up, you'll come up with 48. That's what we're looking for, OK? OK, objective 2a. So this will be the first slide in our second objective. Distance, time, uh, rate, excuse, distance, rate, and time problems. OK, an object that moves at a constant rate is said to be in uniform motion. We like to say that in uniform motion. I'll highlight it right here. In uniform motion. The formula d distance is equal to rt gives the relationship between distance d, rate r, and time t. That's distance equals rate times time. Uniform motion problems may involve objects going in the same direction, opposite directions, or it might be a round trip type of, a, of an affair, OK? So in the diagram below, the two vehicles are traveling the same direction at different rates, or as we like to say, at different speeds. The distance the vehicles travel, or the distances, excuse me, the vehicles travel is the same. So one, as you see here, is going 40 miles per hour, and it's going to travel for five hours. And the other one here is traveling 50 miles an hour, and it's going to do it in four hours. And what is it? We're traveling 200 miles. So 40 times 5 is 200, and 50 times 4 is 200. So you kind of get the flavor that, OK? So since the distances are equal, the products of the rate and time for the two cars are equal. And as I read it off to you, and it says right here, the vehicle is shown 40 times 5 or 50 times 4. It's the same distance. They just went at different speeds. OK, example 3a, direction, uh, the same direction travel problem. A train leaves the train station at 1 PM. It travels at an average rate of 60 miles per hour. A high speed train leaves the exact same station an hour later. It travels at an average speed of 96 miles per hour. The second train follows the exact same route as the first train on a track parallel to the first track. OK. In how many hours will the second train catch up to the first train? So to put this in terms of variables, let's just say that let t equal the time of travel for the first train. And by doing that, we know that the for t minus 1 now, because the second train is going to be traveling one hour less than the time for the first train, because it left an hour later. But they're going to travel, they're going to get the same distance, OK? So we're going to have t minus 1 hours for the second train. So now when we relate that to speed and time, we'll see that train 1 is going to be going 60 miles per hour right here. And he's going to be, it's going to be traveling for t amount of time. So that's distance will be 60 times t. And the second train is going to be traveling at 96 miles an hour for t, the exact same amount of time as train 1, but minus one hour. So not exactly one hour, exactly one hour less than the time it takes for train 1. So therefore, the distance traveled is 96 times t minus 1. That'll be the distance traveled. So looking at how this is going to lay out, then we're going to write down that 60, 60 t, that's for the first train, is equal to, because they're going the same distance. We're looking at distance here now. The distance is traveled by both. Here, the distance is traveled by both trains. 60 t is equal to 96 times t minus 1. So we're going to just carry out the mathematics here, the distributive property on the right-hand side to get 60t is equal to 96t minus 96. And to get, you know, the terms on the correct side, we'll get not the correct side, but get variables on one side and constants on the other. And, and then to not have negative numbers, I'll make it stay positive. We'll do a, a, a little slower method, but let's look at it. We're going to subtract 60t from each side right here. And then what's going to happen is we're going to get 
0 on the left-hand side, and we're going to have 36t equal minus 96, because 96t right here minus 60t is going to be 36t. So then we're going to move the, 90, the negative 96 to the left-hand side. So we're going to get a positive 96 on the left-hand side. So we're going to have 96 is equal to 36t minus 96 plus 96. Then we're going to simplify this, and we're going to get 96 is equal to 36t. We're going to divide both sides right here. Divide both sides by 36 right there. And when we do that, we're going to get t is equal to 2 and 2 thirds hours. OK? Or 2 and hours and 40 minutes, right? So t minus 1 is going to be equal to 2. That's the, the um, time for the second train. It's going to be 2 and 2 thirds minus 1 will be 1 and 2 thirds, OK? Hours, because we have to subtract the 1 hour for the second train. So 1 and 2 thirds hours for the second train. OK, example 3, check your understanding. So as you know from working with me now, that I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try this on your own and see what you come up with, and we'll work it together when you get back. But before you go, I will read it to you. The problem says a group of campers and a camp leader left the campsite in a canoe. They traveled at an average rate of 10 kilometers per hour. Two hours later, two hours later, that's the important part, two hours later, um, the other group leader left the campsite in a motorboat. He traveled at an average rate of 22 kilometers. So, so the questions are, how long after the canoe left the campsite did the motorbike boat catch up with it? How many hours was the canoe traveling when the motorboat caught it? And then how long did the motorboat travel? Those are the two questions. So I'll wait for you. I'll give it, give it a chance and for you to do it. And when you come back, we'll work together. OK, so now I'm assuming you've done that and you were working this together. Um, the important thing to know here is that what we have is this distance formula, right? So we know that I'm just going to write it. So we know that distance is equal to rate times time. And what we know here is that both boats are traveling the same distance because they both start from the same place. And when the speedboat or the motorboat catches the canoe, they've traveled the exact same distance at that moment, just that the canoe was slower and the motorboat was faster. So we can do one rate time is equal to the other rate and time, OK? And they, then when we solve that, we'll know how what the time was, what t. And we're going to let t equal the time the canoe. So we'll let t equal the time of the canoe's, canoe's travel. <clears throat> OK, so let's. Let's put this together. So we're going to say the canoe traveled at 10 kilometers per hour. That's the rate times t. That's the amount of time it traveled. And we said we're going to let t equal the time of the canoe's travel. And we're going to say that that is equal to the 22, the rate of 22 kilometers per hour for the motorboat. But that's how long is the motorboat going to travel? It's going to travel for t, the amount of time that the canoe traveled minus two hours less two hours less because it's it's going to leave two hours later so it's obviously going to be traveling two hours less it can't travel those two hours that the canoe travel it's because it's still at the dock so to speak <clears throat> so let's solve this so when we solve it we're going to get we're going to get 10 t and that's equal to 22 t minus 44. OK, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to move the 22 to the opposite side to get the t's together. So I'm going to say 10t minus 22t is equal to 22t minus 44, right, um, minus 
t. So now we're going to combine like terms, which, which means we have the t's on this side. So we've lost the t's on the right. So we're going to have on the, on the left-hand side, we're going to have negative 12t. And that is equal to these two t's, two 22 t's are gone. And we're left with a negative 44. So now we just have to get the t by itself. And in order to do that, we're going to divide each side by negative 12. And so doing, we're going to get rid of the coefficient and the negative sign all at once. Okay, and we're going to divide this other side by negative 12. Both sides get divided by negative 12. And the result then is t is equal to negative 44 divided by 12. And that happens to be, uh, I'll just, as a fraction, so to speak, or a compound number, we're going to say that that happens to be 2, let's see, 3, 12 goes into 44 three times with 8 remainder and 8 of 8 twelfths is 2 thirds. So it's going to be 3 and 2 thirds is how hours, hours, H-O-U-R-S. That's how long. So now then it says, well, how long did it take for the motorboat to travel? Well, what do we know? We know how long the canoe traveled. It was three and two thirds hours. Well, and we also know that the motorboat traveled two hours less. So the answer has to be three and two thirds minus two. And that happens to be equal to one and two thirds hours. Okay? Good. Okay, objective 2b, it's a continuation of objective 2. This is the second slide. Distance, rate, and time problems. Okay, for uniform motion problems that involve a round trip, it is important to remember that the distance going is equal to the distance returning. Round trip. Okay, you, so you see the little chart here. It shows that traveling in one direction, um, uh, well, let's say from right from left to right, it says twenty miles per hour times three hours is sixty is sixty miles, right? Twenty times three, and returning at a different speed, thirty miles per hour, you'll be driving for two hours and go those sixty miles. So that's the thing we have to kind of look at. We just did that in the previous problem, though, except they're in the same direction, but it's the same concept, right? They're both traveling. You're traveling the same distance each time. In this case, it's the same car doing the same distance in different directions before it was two different boats traveling the same distance. So since the distances are equal, the products of the rate and time for traveling in both directions are equal. So that is, if you had 20 miles times three hours, it would be 60 kilometers or 60 miles, or 30 miles in two hours would still be 60 miles. Okay? Okay, example four, round trip travel. Noya drives into the city to buy a software program at a computer store. Because, the traffic, because of traffic conditions, she averages only 15 miles per hour. On her drive home, she averages 35 miles per hour. If the total time of travel, that she, the travel time is two hours, how long does it take her to drive to the computer store? So we want to just pick out the trip to the store. So we're going to let, so what are we going to do? Let's let t equal the time it took for her to get to the computer store. Okay. And then we're going to let 2 minus t equal the time Noya, of, of Noya's drive home. Because we know we have a total of two hours. So she has some amount of time that she drove. Let's say it was a half an hour to the store, or uh, it was just the opposite. Let's say it was an hour and a half to the store. Well, that means there's only an hour left of that two hours, right? So the return home is going to be that time minus, okay, the time that it took to get to the store because they gave us what the total round trip time was. So you see it right here. You see um, part of part of Noya's travel to the computer store was at a rate of 15, what are we talking about here? We're talking about uh, miles, excuse me, miles. And the time she was driving is T. And so the distance is 15 times t. We've talked about that. The rate, what do we have? We have distance is equal to rate times time. Okay. And then for the return home, it's 35 is the rate. And 
the time was the given two hours that we had to st the total time minus the time it took to get to the computer store on the way into town. So a two minus that amount of time, the original drive time. So now that's it gives us a distributive property look here, right? So 35 times the quantity two minus t. That's what we're getting the rate times time for the return trip. So let's let's solve this. So we're going to write down 15 t. That's what we have 15 times t. 15 t is equal to 35 times 2, the quantity 2 minus t. And then we're going to use the distributive property to take care of the right hand side. So we end up with 15 t is equal to 35 times 2 is 70. And 35 times negative t is negative 35. So you have 70 minus 35 t using the distributive property there. Then we're going to add 35 to both sides. So here it's 35 t, right? So we have a negative 35 t. We're going to add plus 35 to both sides. So we get 15 t plus 35 t is equal to 70 minus 35 t plus 35 t. That's where we added 35 t to each side. Okay, using the additive, what is it, the additive property of equality. So then we end up with 15 plus 35 is 50t. And you have the 70t here. The 35s cancel each other. So now what do we have to do? We have to divide, we have to get the t by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by 50. And when we do that, we're going to get 50t divided by 50 is equal to 70 divided by 50. And that means that the 50s cancel. And we have t is equal to 70 divided by 50, which comes out to 1.4. So Nova's time took 1.4 hours to drive to the computer store. And if that's the case, we'd go to the 2 and subtract 1.4. And that would mean that the drive back took what? 0 0.6 hours to return home. Okay? Because the two of them, 0 0.6 and 1.4 equals 2 hours. Okay, example 4, check your understanding. On his way to work from home, your uncle averaged only 20 miles per hour. On his drive home, he averaged 40 miles per hour. If the total travel time is an hour and a half. How long did it take him to drive to work? Okay, so this is a check your understanding problem. So we want you to go ahead and stop the video and give it a shot. And when you come back, we'll work it together. Okay, so go ahead and stop the video and I'll wait for you. Okay, now that you've had time to do it, so let's go ahead and work it together. So what are we going to do? We're going to say, we see that on his way to work from home, uncle traveled at 20 miles per hour. Um, on his way back home, he averaged 40 miles an hour. He traveled for an hour and a half total time. How long did it take him to drive to work? Well, let's let T, the amount of time, we don't know how long it took to get to work. So let's let T equal the amount of time it took to get to work. So we're going to say, right here, you see it, let t equal time to work. And then the total time of travel is an hour and a half. We got that hour and a half as a total. Okay. Then the rate to work was 20 miles per hour. We know that from here in the, in the story. And the return home was 40 miles, or 40 miles per hour over here on the way home. So we're going to write down this form, the equation, right? So it's it's, this is distance. Basically, it's a distance problem. We're setting two distances equal. The distance there and distance back, although we're not even calculating for distance, but we're calculating for time. But it's rate and time are the variables that we're playing with here. Um, so it's 20 times t. So the time leaving at 20 miles per hour is equal to the time returning 40 times the quantity, one and a half is the time that was the total time minus the time it took to get to work. You had the two together, the 40, whatever, the 40 miles per hour time range in the 20s, and you'll get the total time, right? So 20t is equal to 40 times one and the quantity 1.5 minus 
t and we take care of the distributive property right here uh, 40 times 1.5 is 60 and 40 times negative t is negative 40 t so therefore with the equation at this point or the formula the answer has 20 t is equal to 60 minus 40 t we're going to now subtract or excuse me add 40 t to both sides using the additive property of equality we're going to add 40 t to both sides so here's where we're adding 40 t to the left hand side and here's where we added 40 t to the right hand side when you do that these two 40s cancel okay and these two t terms add so you get 20 plus 40 is 60 and that equals 60. Divide both sides by 60 to get the t by itself. So we have 60 divided by 60 over here. They cancel and it becomes 1. 60 over 60 here becomes 1. So we end up with t equals 1. So uncle's time to work was 1 hour. Okay, objective 2c. This is the third slide in the distance rate time problems. For uniform motion problems involving two objects moving in opposite directions, you can write equations using the fact that the sum of their distances is the total difference. Distance. So however far the one vehicle, if you will, traveled, plus the distance the second vehicle traveled is the total distance. Okay, even though they're driving in opposite directions. Okay, example five opposite direction travel jane and peter leave their home traveling in opposite directions on a straight road peter drives 15 miles an hour faster than jane drives after three hours they have traveled together 225 miles so they're 225 miles apart from each other find peter's rate and jane's rate okay so let's start with jane's rate let r equal jane's rate and we're doing that because Peter's rate is relative to Jane's rate. They said that Peter is driving 15 miles an hour faster than Jane. So Jane drives R, Peter drives R plus 15. And as you see it in our chart, Jane is R, driving three hours, and she's distance is three times R. Using our formula, distance is equal to rate times time. And Peter's is R plus 15 for the rate for the same three hours, because they both drove, and there were three hours each driving. And so when the distance is three times the quantity, R, which is Jane's rate, plus the 15, that's the extra that Peter's doing. So let's write the equation, write 3R plus three times the quantity, R plus 15 is equal to 225. So now let's, I'm going to write the equation one more time. This is when I'm writing it. This is what we calculated it to be. Now I'm writing the equation. 3R plus 3 times the quantity R plus 15 is 225. Let's take care of the distributive property for the 3 times the quantity R plus 15. We have 3R plus 3R, 3 times R plus 3 times 45, 15 is 45. And they all equal 225. Combining like terms, we have 6R, 3R plus 3R is equal to 6R plus the 45 equals 225. And now we're going to move the 45 to the opposite side to get the 6R by itself. So we're going to subtract 45 from both sides. So we're going to get 6R equals 180 because these two 45s cancel and 2 and a quarter or 225 minus 45 is equal to 180. Therefore, R is equal to 30. That is, so we're going to divide both sides by 6. And we get R equal 30. So Jane's rate is 30 miles an hour. R is Jane's rate is 30. And Peter's rate is Jane's rate, 30, plus his 15 extra, which makes 45 miles per hour is, is Peter's rate. Okay? Okay, example five, check your understanding. So as you know, um, this means I'd like you to stop the video and try this yourself. It's basically the same as the slide we just completed. It says, Sarah and John leave Perryville traveling in opposite directions on the straight road. 
Sarah drives 12 miles per hour faster than John. And for two hours, they are, tra- they are 176 miles apart. Find John's speed and find Sarah's speed. So now they want the speed. That they, is what they want, right? Same as before. The rate. So why don't you go ahead and stop the video. I'll wait for you. And when you come back, we'll start it up again. Okay, now that you're back and we're getting ready to solve this together, um, it says Sarah and John leave Perryville traveling in opposite directions on the same on a straight road. Sarah drives 12 miles per hour faster than John. After two hours, they are 176 miles apart. Find John's speed and find Sarah's speed. Well, let's start by saying that John's speed is R. Because we're going to use the formula, D is equal to R times T. Distance is rate times time. John's rate is R. And the reason why I picked it this way is because it says that Sarah is driving 12 miles per hour faster than John. So John, I'm going to assume, is the common rate here. And Sarah is, the, and Sarah is faster relative to John. Okay? So... We have this information. So we have the John is R. Sarah is 12. Here's 12 miles per hour faster than John. And we have 176 miles apart. So they're each driving a piece of this 176 miles. Sarah is going to be driving a little, a smaller piece than John because John's, oh no, I mean a larger piece because Sarah is faster than John, right? And the distance they're traveling is 176 miles right here. And they're traveling for two hours. Each are traveling for two hours. Okay, so let's write the equation. The equation says that 176 miles, that's the distance, is equal to um, John's distance plus Sarah's distance. So that's two. And the distance here, distance is equal to rate times time. And the rate is... John's rate is R, and the time is 2 hours. So we have 2R plus the same 2 hours for, for Sarah, which is John's rate times John's rate plus 12. Plus 12. So we're going to get 2R plus 24. Now that equals 176. Well, we're gonna, what we're going to do is what is we're going to try it. We're going to get the 24 on the left-hand side so we can get the R by itself. So we're going to subtract 24 from both sides, and we're going to get, therefore, 76 minus 12, 24 is equal to 4R plus 24 minus 24. These two are going to cancel each other, plus and minus, and 176 minus 24 is going to leave us with 152 equals 4Rs, and we're going to divide both sides by 4, when we do that, here's the 4 on this side, and we're dividing by 4 on this side, and this 4 disappears here. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 152 divided by 4 is 38. So John's rate, right here, John's rate is equal to 138 miles per hour. What's Sarah's speed? Well, Sarah's speed is John's speed plus 12 miles per hour. So Sarah's speed is 38 plus 12 equals 50 miles per hour.